Are you an aspiring Jedi, or do you dabble with the dark side of the Force? Regardless of whether you fancy yourself a Defender of the Light or an aspiring Sith Lord, you're going to need a lightsaber. Podcast Stardust is pleased to partner with Saber Masters, the creators of high-quality, durable, and affordable lightsabers. Saber Masters is preparing to launch the Ultimate Lightsaber 2.0, and right now you can get two for the price of one. So, check out the link in our show notes and go get your Ultimate Lightsabers from Saber Masters. And don't forget to use our referral code STARDUST to save $10 at checkout. And each purchase using our referral code helps support Podcast Stardust. Hello there. This is James Arnold Taylor, the voice of Obi-Wan Kenobi, and you're listening to Dennis and Jay on Podcast Stardust. Their behavior is continuously unexpected. Hmm. So uncivilized. Hello and welcome to Podcast Stardust. This is the fully armed and operational podcast dedicated to Star Wars news, reviews, and discussion. I'm Dennis Keithley. And I'm Jay Krebs. And we are joined by a returning guest for this episode. You know him from the Rebel Base Card and the Long Take Review Podcast. Please welcome back to Podcast Stardust, Greg Cass. Greg, how are you doing? Oh, I actually wanted to be called Eye of the Storm tonight. No, yeah. I'm, I'm great, Dennis. Ah. <laughs> From Iron uh, Cannon to... Thank uh... you for having me. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> well, if Greg's uh, hint didn't tip you off, we're going to be discussing uh, the High Republic in general in this episode. And, uh, but before we get into that, Jay, I want to remind everybody where we can be found around the internet. Wow, I don't have a witty comeback for that. <laughs> we are on Facebook, <laughs> Instagram, and X conveniently at Podcast Stardust. And Greg, where can everyone find you? Uh, people can find me primarily on Instagram and threads at Ion Cannon. That's E-Y-E-O-N-C-A-N-O-N. Yeah, still one of the best social media handles for really the Star Wars. I love it. Okay. okay. The dish is lying. The signal's boosted to maximum output. The shield is down. We are now broadcasting to the galaxy. Going to pull back the curtain a little bit. We are recording this in uh, early to mid-April uh, ahead of my early summer travel. So by the time this one comes out, some things may be out of date, as you probably told from an episode last week. Uh, hey, it is what it is. Uh, but uh, we want, didn't want to leave anybody without some content while I am gone. But yeah, we're going to talk about the High Republic in general. We are in the um, early, we just completed the first wave of phase three. And uh, this has been going on now since what, 2020 was when this all started with, uh, we're in the middle of COVID. Mm -hmm. Actually, I guess they pushed it back a little bit. So because it was supposed to come out in August of that year. So since 2021, we've been enjoying this content. Greg, Jay and I have talked about it quite a bit on uh, past shows, but uh, overall, what is your take on the High Republic? Oh, I know you talked about it a lot because I, I am always sure to save those episodes and listen to every single one of those uh, all the way through. Um, I am a huge High Republic fan. Um, uh, so I am uh, I, I started tracking this back when it was called Project Luminous and they were giving us those tantalizing hints. Uh, and then I was very, very fortunate. Um, I am not a social media influencer of the level who gets uh, review copies, but I have a wife who works at a bookstore and uh, was uh, past uh, the the first YA and the first middle grade book early. So I, I'm a High Republic fan from about October of 2020 uh, ahead of release and felt very special in that limited way to, to steal my wife's clout and, and enjoy that. Um, and I, I think uh, it's it's hard to say this, you know, with total confidence. But I think I've read everything uh, as the High Republic has come along. Oh. I, I really try to stay up to date on on review or, or on release dates and grab thing as it comes. So um, I I am not at all going to pretend to be uh, you know objective here. I'm I'm very much a High Republic fan. That's awesome. 
That's Nothing fantastic. wrong with that. Yes. And we, we were pointing out okay. before we started recording that, uh, of course, the, the listeners can't see this, but you have a Stellan Geos lightsaber <laughs> in the background there as we are recording. Oh, I'm so, so pleased with that, um, that they created it. And, you know, I I try to limit my collecting these days, especially the high end items. But I do think there's a, a way in which you need to vote with your money. And I wanted right. to vote. Yeah. I, I want more High Republic uh, treasures and, and collectibles. So, so I snatched that right up. Um, we're in June, so I, I think it's you know, outside of when I can be held accountable to this, but I definitely had my class do group work at noon on that particular day and uh, <laughs> quickly on my laptop, uh, reserved my Stellan Geo's uh, lightsaber and then uh, got back to teaching uh, a little later in the class period. Oh, I've never done anything like that as a teacher. Hmm. <laughs> never. Yeah. Just okay. <laughs> Yeah, I haven't blocked off entire segments of my day so that I don't get called into meetings for that. Okay. <laughs> so what is it about the High Republic that you think that they're doing well that makes you appreciate it show? Uh, appreciate it. So uh, we'll start with you, Greg, and then I'll get your input on that, Jay. Uh, so I um, said in my last appearance that I am a child of the dark times, which means um, for me, the books have always been very central to my fandom because I came up um, in between the original trilogy and the prequel trilogy. So I really became a fan around like 95, 96. And um, all there were, were books. I mean, there were VHS tapes and, and old action figures in giant bins for a quarter a pop at flea markets, but there wasn't stuff except for, for the books. And so um, I uh, started uh, then uh, being in love with the books and nothing has kind of reawakened that passion in me um, like the High Republic has. And to me, it benefits um, so much from just being totally different um, that we are outside of the familiar confines of, of the timeline of events. We get a few characters who are familiar uh, sprinkled throughout, but never really, you know, um, characters. We don't know that th their story and, and that's really beautiful and freeing in star Wars, as much as I love all the storytelling that happens. And, um, you know, I, a uh, year or so ago, or, or maybe six months ago, I wrote a blog entry about what, uh, live action star Wars should learn from the high Republic. And my first item on the list was, um, you know, be weird. Don't, don't be afraid to get a little <laughs> weird and, and let star Wars be something new and different. And, and this series, with the Nile, with the the Drangir, and and so many uh, with Geode, uh, so many other examples has hasn't been afraid to to do something different and unfamiliar in ways that I think are thrilling for me as a, a Star Wars fan, you know, of the last thirty years or so. Yeah, I would definitely echo a lot of what you just said as well, Greg. And you know, for me too, I know. As you mentioned, when this first came out as Project Luminous, it was like, oh, okay, that's kind of cool, but it wasn't really on my radar all that much until, you know, we really started getting into it. And Dennis and I really started talking about it and then started seeing just the, the breadth and depth of all of these authors and just the, 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 the buildup of all of the, the meetings that they had together and all of the, the creative, uh, kind of, of, you know, sketchbooks, if you will, of the way that they wanted to do things. And I thought, okay, this is, kind of in some ways like expanded universe slash legends in which we had all of these different authors that were bringing us stories from you know different different aspects of of different characters and and but the thing about the high republic that i think really does a nice job that legends does not is that it's a lot more cohesive and that you see so much more of you know this this harmony across the storytelling. And whereas with Legends slash Expanded Universe, you know, the every everything was great. I mean, you know, Dennis and I both are just huge, huge Legends fans. And one of my very favorite characters or my my favorite character ever, Tahiri Vela, is from Legends. So, you know, I can't say enough about how much I love it. But, you know, the High Republic is different in that it is, it's just, like I said, it's just so much more cohesive. And it's something that you can follow through the books and the comics and 
you know, the, the audio dramas and, you know, and, 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 and now that we've got the acolyte too, it's just kind of a gift that keeps on giving. And it's such a really cool era of Star Wars. And, you know, like you, Greg, it's, it's one of those things where you just have to let it in and it's fresh and it's, it's different, but it's, but it still feels like home. And, you know, and, and Dennis and I, I know we're just loving every single adventure that we're able to cover. And it's just, I get so excited. I mean, you can tell I'm just, I just love the High Republic. I just think it's fantastic. Yeah. I have to echo a lot of the things that you both said. And if I didn't say it before, I'm going to say it now. We're going to be spoiling stuff that happens in the High Republic. So <laughs> listen to this at your own risk. Uh, probably should have said that earlier. Uh, unfortunately, we haven't really given away too many details. Yeah. For me, I think one of the things I like about it is that this is an era, um, and I like what you said, Greg, about the live action Star Wars can learn something from this. It's not saturated. So much of that time period between A New Hope and Empire Strikes Back, those few years right before A New Hope now, are so saturated with stories that they have to be so careful. And if they they want to tell us a story about Han Solo, well, we know Han's going to live to the end, you know, if, uh, mm-hmm. and those type of things. And where there are consequences for these characters that we see in the high republic and they've not been shy about killing some of them off so that tension is always there and it's part of the reason why i wanted them to go beyond the rise of skywalker with some of the storytelling is get us into another area or where we don't know that everyone's going to make it out of this i mean you can generally suspect that some key characters are going to survive to the end of a book or a comic or whatever the case may be but at least with uh with this you know don't get attached because you know the fallen <laughs> star rolls around and kills a whole bunch of your favorite characters or at least yeah makes you think they're dead uh over um over the case, um over the timeline here so with that having been said is there anything that you think the high republic could be doing better right now i think they uh are starting to course correct for this. Um, But I think the pacing of the release has turned off a lot of readers. And, Mm -hmm. you know, that's just because people are feeling overwhelmed. And and that's totally fair. And, uh, you know, again, because of of my my wife's line of work, I get a deep discount on every book I buy. So I don't necessarily worry about that the way other fans have to. But it's a huge investment. And I think the authors themselves have been saying, you know, use your libraries. You know, you don't have to buy every single thing that comes out. and, And you don't have to read it all. But... I think because it's so um, beloved and and all encompassing, everybody wants to consume it all and it can get overwhelming. Um, You know, I have two really good friends here in town and all three of us started reading everything together in in phase one. And then they both fell off in phase two. Um, And I think the the change of the timeline through them and they didn't like the, the earlier time period as much but also had just kind of gotten some fatigue and so so gave up. Now, um, Michael Sieglin said, and, and we've already seen for the first wave, that they're slowing down wave three a little bit. They're stretching it out. Um, so I, I think that's my biggest complaint, even though uh, I've kept up with it. It has uh, felt a, like a lot at times. And, you know, um, somebody asked me in the lead up to Acolyte, like, oh, where, what happened in, uh, in this with like what should i know about her i'm like oh i don't know if i remember you know (laughs) how to do that and and actually i I think um i shared on social media when i started new defy the storm i really struggled with about the first third of that book because i couldn't keep the characters straight because i had probably too much through mission to disaster which i think is the last time the majority of those characters uh, uh appeared so um the the best advice I have, and, and maybe this speaks to a weakness, is you got to get the High Republic character encyclopedia and have it right next to you when you're reading because it's really handy to be able to look up and, and verify who those characters are. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would echo that too. You know, there is a lot. <laughs> and I know I have some friends <laughs> that, you know, they they really didn't know that the High Republic even existed. And then when I start talking about it and gushing about it and that type of thing, and then they say, oh, you know, where can I find some of these things? And then they think, oh, my gosh, like there's so much. So it can definitely be overwhelming. 
Um, but one thing I know that, you know, Dennis, I can, I know I can speak for you in this is that there's a lot of places that you can jump in and jump out of, and you don't have to feel like you have to consume everything to get, you know, a, enjoyment out of, out of the high Republic and out of the stories and out of these characters and, and, and that type of thing. So, um, but yeah, I, I find myself just jumping onto Wikipedia a lot, you know, to, to kind of verify who, okay, who is that again? And I'm very, very grateful to have a co-host with an eidetic memory because he, <laughs> I tell him he, he is my saving grace because Dennis always reminds me of, of the people, places, and things that just kind of go in one ear and out the other sometimes for me. And so I, I'm very thankful that, that Dennis keeps my brain pan straight all the time. <laughs> Well, thank you. Uh, you flatter me here. Uh, it's true. <laughs> well, okay. But yeah, part of that is as Star Wars fans, we've been getting trained so much, especially lately, that they mention an alien name. And if it doesn't jump out to you, you're absolutely right, Jay. You go to Wikipedia, you put it in there, and you're like, oh, yeah, that was that third alien to the right in the cantina and yeah. <laughs> solo Star Wars. Sure, got it. Got it. Uh, as for me, I guess my criticisms of the higher public of this is that, and I would not have thought to put it the way that you did, Greg, which is that the throttle was crazy on this. And I did not realize exactly how much stuff had put out until I sat down here and tried to list everything that came out. And I was like, wow, I thought I was pretty complete on this, but I found a number of, especially like the higher public adventure type stuff that I hadn't, I wasn't even aware existed in a few cases and I'm like, well, okay. And then I know, um, if you can see my office right now, I've got a day bed that's got a bunch of stuff that I haven't gotten around to putting on my shelves yet. And some of that are like comics and a few things that, uh, you know, George Mann's recent collection, stuff like that. I didn't even know, I forgot that I had pre-ordered that until it showed up on my doorstep uh, last <laughs> week. That was a big surprise. Like, I didn't even know, I didn't even remember it existed. And there it was. Yeah. I guess I sent you a text, Jay, about that. You did. And, it was like, oh, wow. <laughs> right. And so... <laughs> I am I am a completist and I know a lot of Star Wars fans are and they want to know things. This was a big problem when they got rid of Legends. This was that we went from being experts to having our knowledge base reset on right. things like that. And mm. that was one of the things that bothered me the most. And now, you know, like this realization I had today is like, um, as I'm reading through something like Defy the Storm and there's a character who's like, oh, am I supposed to know this person or not? And then you mm. have to take the time out to go and find it. And then you find there's a source that, you forgot about and that's the other thing with the amount that they've released i was looking at my bookshelves my higher public collections right above my computer that we're recording this on and i pulled some of the books off and i was like i know the characters are on the cover i can't remember what they did in this yeah. one i think it's what you're alluding to greg <laughs> and you know some of the yeah. big ones like especially the adult novels i get uh i can remember the, the you know because those are the, the broad strokes okay so i'm kind of repeating what you all said there the other thing is is that i feel like the series could do a better job uh, they don't always identify a, a villain in the books. And by that, I mean, you know, we got Martian Rowe, but defy the storm. He showed up in like three pages of that book. And then the Nile were the general villain, but there wasn't any one particular one of them that was around to be the antagonist for our heroes over the course of that story. And don't get me wrong. I'll enjoy uh, defy the storm, but I feel like if they had more of a focus character to be working against or working against them, that could have brought us a tighter narrative overall. And they've done that a couple times over the course of the storytelling. Um, so, you know, I think of uh, fallen star, the, there were some smaller villains in there, but again, it was the Nile in general kind of in the background sabotaging that as opposed to you know martian roe is some version of the emperor darth vader whatever but he's a lot of times kind of twirling his mustache in the background uh you and then you get an, an, uh, a case of him being written by charles soul in uh that two-part comic series you know uh eye of the storm i think it was what it's called you know like and he's front and center and he's amazing give me more of that um so that i guess is my my criticism of the higher public. And I mean, if that's as bad as it gets, it's not particularly bad. So, <laughs> so is there a particular story that has really stood out to you from the higher public so far that as, as a favorite one that you point to and say, this, this is why I enjoy it so much. I, I have to be, uh, Honest, even if I'm a little basic, and and I I actually now count this as my favorite book in current canon. Um, that you know when a, a 
somebody who's curious about starting Star Wars books often asks that question. I, I put them to Light of the Jedi, which I think is just phenomenal. And um, I'm a huge fan of of Charles Soule um, kind of in the lead up to that book, but but especially since that book. And I know, I, I believe, Dennis, at least you followed uh, Charles Soule over to the Endless Voyage as well, mm -hmm. like I did. And and now he's got uh, Chronicles of the Lazarine, which which we were a part of the Kickstarter for. And, and I just really have come to value how he tells stories. Um, you know, at, at this moment, I'm not wishing for the end of the High Republic, but I'm so excited that he gets the kind of last word uh, on the series uh, with the last adult novel. Um, so, so Light of the Jedi um, is is the one I I would point to, and and the reason is because the spirit of the moment of the of the the initiative was really like let's rewind the clock from Phantom Menace to show the Jedi before they were in their kind of fallen state, and I thought Light of the Jedi was so good at that, and the the moment when as the the, the tragedy starts to unfold um, over Hetzel and the Jedi show up and everything is, is great. Um, and, you know, every, everybody kind of calms as the Jedi take over and they, they show kind of the good, the good deeds. Um, and the, there's a moment later in that book where um, Avar uh, kind of levitates and becomes the channel through which force powers flow and, mm -hmm. um, off and, and draws rain, I believe, to cool off the droids. And all of that just had this sense of wonder I hadn't felt about the Jedi probably since the prequels. Um, there are some wonderful moments with Jedi, but but that kind of purity, like, you know, I, I'm a huge fan of, of Last Jedi and what Luke did was like one of the most heroic things ever and really impressive force power. But it had that taint of kind of gray or darkness to it, whereas this was just like pure light and goodness. Um, and it was really inspiring uh, to see in that one. Uh, I could list like 10 more favorites. I'll, I'll focus on that one as as the one that I really love best of all. It's hard to pick just one. How about you, Jay? Yeah, well said, Greg. Um, yeah, for me, of course, you know, I mean, Light of the Jedi booted it all off. And you're right. It really did kind of bring you back to that sort of wide-eyed wonder of what the Jedi really are and like in this golden age. And honestly, you know, it's, for me, it's kind of the same way with the movies. It honestly depends on what kind of a mood I'm in. But a lot of times I think about it in, you know, what what book or books would I go back to 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 read again? Or what books do I think about? You know, when I think High Republic, like what are some of the first things that come to mind? And, you know, for me, um, honestly, like Into the Dark was one of the big ones for me. I loved the whole idea of the, the, the Drangier and... And then being introduced to the vessel and Leox Jassy and all of these kind of ragtag sort of people and and everything that they were doing at that time. And then I love Cataclysm because, you know, I love me some Axel Greylark. And these are just some amazing characters that, you know, just kind of run run the gamut of of just all types of, of characters. And, you know, and then, of course, there's um, Eye of Darkness from this this last phase that is just absolutely phenomenal and so yeah so you know those are just a few path of vengeance is another one that comes to mind right away fallen star is an amazing one so yeah so just you know like you uh greg i could i could go on and gush about all of these but those are the the top ones for me that that come to mind but uh but dennis what about you i i, I have a feeling i know what your number one is but number one would have been light of the jedi yeah um, that's what i figured yeah, I'm, I'm... <laughs> Just like Greg, I'm a huge, huge Charles Soule fan. It started with his work on Star Wars comics, especially his run on Darth Vader, which is probably my favorite 25 issues of Star Wars comics when it comes down to it. Um, but since we talked about that, I'm going to highlight one of the audio dramas, and that was what Kevin Scott did with uh, Tempest Runner. Mm, um, good he, point. Mm, great he, as much as I liked Light of the Jedi, I wasn't particularly a big fan of Lorna D in that book. However... Kevin turned her into a tour de force in Tempest wow. Runner uh, really gave that character some depth, added some sympathy for High Republic fans for her, but cemented her as a villain. Uh, well, an anti-hero at the end, you know, and we're kind of seeing an evolution of that character again in phase three of the High Republic. Mm. But I've, I've listened to that, I think, three times now and uh, read the script and really, really enjoyed that one. I think it was a, a fantastic uh, a bit of work. 
uh, you know, I, I love Charles soul. And again, that book, and I liked everything he's done, but Kevin Scott has really stood out for me when it comes to the high Republic, because he's done books, he's done the audio drama, he's done comics, uh, his work with Marvel on the, you know, the ongoing series for each one of the phases is, uh, some excellent storytelling. He comes up with some fantastic characters and breeze life, you know, Keith uh, what mm-hmm. he's done with her and master mm-hmm. skier, uh, is just, I'm, I can't wait to pick up each one of those issues every month when those come out and see what's happened with them. Oh yeah. The comics are just a treasure trove. And I'm, I'm so thankful because for me, I, comics are always something that I want to indulge in that I have the desire to do, but it's mainly just because of Dennis and I doing this podcast that I've actually really immersed myself into them. And there is such amazing, amazing stories in those comics that I'm so glad that I didn't miss and that we were actually able to cover. Mm-hmm. So um, you, an- okay. another thing on my list of what live action should learn, and it's just you've hit on it, is I, I said they should trust their creators because that's what's been so beautiful about High Republic. When you talk about Charles or Kevin or Justina or Claudia, they really let these creatives seemingly drive the the storytelling and they've recruited such fantastic talents and all of those uh, creators and, and the next generation as well, Alyssa Wong and, and uh, Zoreta Cordova and um, on and on. I, I know I'm leaving some out, but there's so many now. Um, but uh, they are all just fantastically kind people and they seem so genuinely um, warmed by the response their work has gotten. Um, a top memory from Celebration Anaheim is I was in the room for the High Republic panel and you could just tell they had had no representation of what these books meant to people and th- that they've given so much back to the fandom it just means a lot. And so, um, you know, I think we probably all could, could list which ones we prefer and, and maybe one or two that don't work as well for us, but they all just give their all to this initiative. And, and I'm so impressed by all the storytellers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's well said. While there's a few of these I don't care for as much as the others, every one of these authors has written something that I've liked in mm-hmm. the high Republic uh, that I think has really done, have been an excellent contribution. Uh, so you mentioned this earlier, Greg, they kind of went the unusual route of jumping back a hundred years to give us phase two of the high Republic, which introduced mm-hmm. some ideas that we would um, not fully appreciate until we got really to the end of that phase and kind of see how it started to impact uh, phase three. Um, and you mentioned your friends kind of had a hard time grasping that. Well, what did you think about phase two and that decision to go backwards in time? I I did feel the impatience that I think a lot of fans felt, which is like, but I really want to know what's happening with these characters oh. I've I've grown attached to. And and it was so frustrating to say, oh, it's going to be a, a couple of years until we get back to those stories. Uh, though in, in hindsight, it's now like it was just a blip and, and we're, we're right back into phase three, getting those answers now. I really enjoyed how um, the galaxy uh, was so much rougher in phase two, um, you know, that we had hyperspace prospectors and that, you know, this has been present in the the first and third phase storytelling, but it's like it was even earlier and they made that known. Um, I played the Knights of the Old Republic game when it came out. I love that game. I'm not speaking ill of it, but they were like, oh, it's, it's you know, uh, 5,000 years uh, before A New Hope, but uh, the technology is like, you know, 10 years older. It, it really didn't seem like that much had, had changed. So I like that the High Republic has leaned into the, like, let's really get a, a, a history that matters and a change in that period. Um, I, I mean, yeah, I co-sign what Jay said about Axel Greylark is just a fantastic character and made those those books a lot of fun. But I, I put down, I, I called it the path duology, um, you know, path of uh, deception and path of vengeance on my short list for, you know, favorites, because I, I really love what they did with the path of the open hand. And I think, um, you know, listeners may have more answers than we do, but there seems to be a, a connection to the accolade 
that that was planted there uh, in some regard. From where we sit right now, it just seems like the fact that there's a, a mother character can't just be a coincidence. So I'm really excited to see um, you know them pick up that storytelling. And and Jay also praised Eye of Darkness. I love that Eye of Darkness um, picked up some of those strands from Phase Two and made it clear mm-hmm. that that storytelling mattered. And and if you kind of stuck with it, you'll you'll see benefits to to what you're reading now. Mm hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it was hard for I think a lot of us that just really, like you said, Greg, got just so attached to those characters and then to be like, oh, but wait, we have to go back like 100 years? What? But and and it was actually a very bold move on their part to to take that kind of leap of faith to say, you know, just 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 wait, trust the process. You'll see why. And, you know, and sure enough, why did we ever, you know, doubt it kind of thing? Yeah, I'll. I remember that uh, episode of the High Republic show with Christina Ariel, and they had the authors as they were winding up Phase One, and they're getting ready to get into Phase Two. And at the end, they dropped that bomb that they were going a hundred years into the past. It was just like, wait, 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 whoa, hold on! I, <laughs> you just crashed Starlight Beacon, and you killed Stellan Geos. Where's Buriaga? You, you had you know Master Skiers missing, buckets of blood. All these characters are yeah unaccounted for and now i'm gonna have to wait a year like you know like you're saying greg it's so oh okay and so i was a little (laughs) reluctant to get into phase two but it didn't take me any time at all you know we got to meet vildar mac in the comics and we got to meet uh you know so many other jedi that were there it's i don't remember them as well because again they were just kind of a you know i remember marta roe and her cousin yana roe and the likes and stuff like that but they were kind of elements to tell the story of the characters we met in phase one that were going to continue in phase three. And so I, I love that storytelling. I, I thought the um, audio drama that George Mann did uh, for the battle of Jeddah was fantastic in there. Mm-hmm. I liked Ziri and Fantu uh, from, oh, yeah. uh, uh, was it Iram and Ariadu? Uh, you know, those worlds that have been at war. Uh, I thought, you know, as you also allude to Greg, the integration of the next generation of authors um, was what, and I was nervous about that going in that phase. Like we had such a mm. good thing going with phase one. Do we really need to bring in more people? <laughs> but they did a good, they did good work. Uh, you know, especially, you know, calling out George Mann, Lydia Kang, Zoraida Cordova did good work as well. You know, they, it, they, there's so many of these authors here that, and uh, it's been fun tracking the progress uh, through all of that. And Hey, it was just awesome to get back to Jetta again. You know, it was such yeah. a cool looking little world that we got to see in rogue one. And it's shown up here in places uh, throughout uh, since, um, you know, since Rogue One, but they really got to spend some time on it in Phase Two and kind of see all these different Force sects that were there in the Holy City and how they had that uh, council going of all these different types of Force users and how they were also just always like one moment away from being at each other's throats and uh, just for you know <laughs> something to get called uh, to calm them down at the end there in the Temple of Kyber and stuff. So that was a that was mm-hmm. a fun addition for me okay well we're starting to run out of time so let's do uh, a, a few uh, other quick topics here favorite jedi from the high republic <laughs> that's a tough <laughs> question <laughs> all right i've got 17 uh yeah. that i'll run through quick. no uh, if if i had to pick one I'm, I'm also picking from people we haven't talked a lot about i'll i'll give my vote to porter ingle who um, was just such a standout for me uh, at the beginning. I'm a, a sucker for an old curmudgeon uh, in storytelling. And uh, so I really liked him and his cooking of the stew. Um, you know, I I struggled a little with the his comic book, The Blade, uh, just because it, it was so different. Um, and, and it kind of took me a couple. And then now it's folded into phase three and it matters and so on. Um, but I was so, so happy when Porter showed back up in Eye of Darkness that I was like, oh, I think I think he's much higher in my power ranking of Jedi than I, I might have believed. So um, a, a really fun one. And again, I, I honestly could list like 17 characters right yeah, now, but I'll go with Porter. <laughs> <laughs> how about you jay i love that well of course you know my first inclination is to say avar chris I and i do yes. yes and of course i do <laughs> yeah. love avar um but i'm gonna go off on a on a limb and say bell zedifar 
I just I love his character. I love the fact that he has Ember. And it's it's funny because, you know, Bell, Ember and Porter, they're kind of all sort of, you know, intertwined as well. But I just I don't know. I just really have enjoyed seeing the evolution of Bell as a Jedi and um, kind of where he's going to end up going from here. And I, I think that he's destined for great things. Um, and I would have to say like a close third is definitely Keith Trennis for me. Yeah, yeah, I'm, uh, I've been drooling over the selling Geos lightsaber uh, in the background, Greg, <laughs> because that that was my favorite Jedi yeah. in this series, and mm -hmm. I was really down when he died in um, mm. Fallen Star. That I was just like, have oh, all the characters that they had to, and the, the guy that we didn't get enough of him, and you, you know, he was very so, healthy. Yes, yes, I <laughs> still am about that. Um, <laughs> Understandably so, you know, holding against. <laughs> Claudia Gray for doing that too. Uh, no, I'm, I'm <laughs> kidding. Um, but uh, the other one you brought up that I really like is Keith Turnus. I think she is incredibly mm -hmm. cool. I like the journey she's had. I absolutely loved the moment in uh, the phase one of Marvel's comics when Skier, you know, he's been suffering from this debilitating disease that's uh, limiting his connection to the force, but he's going to charge off to fight the nameless. And she says to him, you know, uh, I'll be your legacy. And then his response, this is not so much about her character, but as a moment, which is like, no, you know, you're your own legacy, you know, and kind of echoing what uh, Yoda tells Luke in the last Jedi. It's like, you know, you, you, you know, you are what, you know, you grow beyond us, you know, that see, that's the burden of masters. Mm -hmm. And I liked how that was reflected. And so I really like what she's been able to do, you know, b beyond that. Well, let's get into the villains. You know, if you had a favorite <laughs> villain, I mean, there's obviously Marcian Rowe, who's the big bad behind all of this, but uh, is that it? Or is there someone else that's been speaking to you? Let me just backpedal to say, I also have to shout out Nibs from Young Jedi Adventures uh, because I have children upstairs who won't accept their father back into the family <laughs> unless I, I shout out Young Jedi Adventures, uh, which has been um, the first thing that uh, my, my daughter is for. And so she's just perfect for that and, yeah. and watches it all the time. And I was even watching Phantom Menace earlier today and she walked in the room and said, oh, is that Master Yoda from you know her nice. show uh oh, real life he traveled into other shows so <laughs> uh yeah i mean just a perfect star wars generation moment uh for that I'll, I'll just say i really like the construction of the nile as an organization and the way in which they have the the levels um and the naming of them the storms and the strikes and the the tempest runners um but i really liked across phase one how you had these kind of rival factions led by Lorna D and and um, the other two uh, rivals t competing for Martians affections and um, so on so I think you hit it on the head earlier Dennis when you said you know Tempest Runner really made Lorna D uh, stand out um, maybe that character has now evolved out of that but I love how deliciously awful she was in those early uh, books and kind of unrepentant in so many ways um it's been surprising um as the nameless take on a larger and larger role and yet somehow remain totally terrifying um and um we know the books are coming out in august and september I believe both have nameless on the cover and one in the title. So I think we're gonna really get the next le level of storytelling in phase two of nope sorry a wave two of phase three um and it's it's really exciting to to think about the the taking on a bigger row a role but all of that folded into the nile organization is is just really masterful storytelling and i imagine it was a huge amount of work for them to map it all out and make sure everybody had their own kind of people to play with uh as it went on mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So, so well said. There are so many things about that. I'm just sitting here just nodding my head, you know, and I, I have to go with Marshawn Rowe. He is definitely, as you said, just deliciously evil. I love that. And I have to say, Mark Thompson, I've gone on record as saying is the best audio book voice ever. I love Marcian <laughs> Rowe in audiobook and I could just listen to that character all day long. And you know, springboarding off of that, you know, we were introduced to Marta Rowe and of course she was this little kind of innocent 
ever any that ends ends up being just completely neurotic and and then eventually fi- founding the Nihil. So you know she's she's got to be in there for me even as a villain, and she's just so neurotic, you know that you just it's like oh my gosh and and but yet that you almost buy into some of her her justification, you know, for doing some of the things that she does, and you know of course then there's Lorna D, which oh man I love me some Lorna D, and I'll tell you what. The biggest breakout character for me is got to be Diva Lompop. She's not a villain, <laughs> yeah. but yet she is. <laughs> I love, I love that character so much, but She's I'm sticking fun. with Marcy on row because yeah, favorite villain for sure. But Diva is- was good. Where did she show up in uh, War of the Bounty Hunters, I guess. Uh, but, uh, and I think is where we first saw her, but when I realized that's who we were talking about in uh, defy the storm and <laughs> just, you know, gotta go so, find someone to eat. Did someone say <laughs> someone to eat? Someone. Uh, that line in there, that book was uh, <laughs> was so fantastic. Yeah, Lorna is is I think my favorite. I I like Martian. Um, it's just that he he hasn't, like I said, uh, he just hasn't gotten as much attention as I want him to get. I want to get more from him, mm-hmm. and I'm looking forward to whatever big confrontation we get with him and whoever it's going to be, whether it's Avar, Chris, Elzar, Man. Keep trying to some collection of all of them uh, later in phase three to wind this whole thing down. And, you know, the Nile, uh, as you're pointing out, Greg, it was such a clever idea. You know, they alternatively been described as, you know, space Vikings, uh, marauders, pirates mm-hmm. and the like. And they've evolved so many different ways. Um, I think that was especially clever from phase two. You know, having them be the descendants of this, you know, path of the open hand and the path of the closed fist, uh, you know, the way the markings evolved and uh, ultimately ended up with this roving band of marauders that someone is trying to impose order on in order to achieve his own goals, which we still don't completely understand yet. Uh, but mm. yeah, that's the one of the strengths of the higher public is that uh, it keep, our understanding of it keeps evolving and, um, you know, they're feeding us a lot of stuff, but uh it, we, we, we still don't know exactly where this is going to go. Okay. Well, we've already talked for a lot longer than I thought we would, and we still have so much more we could do. We're going to have to have you back, Greg, uh, to talk about more of the higher sure. public. Uh, get you definitely back once we get another uh, novel out here in the near future uh, to, to talk about mm-hmm. that. So, um, yeah, thank you for joining us uh, for this discussion. Um, again, just want to get a reminder out there for everybody about uh, where they can uh, reach you. Yeah, thank thank you so much. And and you're right. We could I could talk for days and days, but we'll spare your listeners uh, about that. Uh, so, um, since I shouted it out a couple times, I I do keep a blog which I write on fairly irregularly, but uh, I like to think it's about quality, not quantity. And and my entry on uh, the High Republic uh, and what live action could learn from it, I was I was really proud of, even if only three people looked. So I'll send a few people there. You can find that at um, ioncanon.com. So again, that's E-Y-E-O-N-C-A-N-O-N. And that just links you to the sub And uh, there's there's some Star Wars content around there. I I talk about movies uh, and TV shows a little bit. Whenever I kind of get an idea, I I put some thoughts down. So uh, I'd love it if people checked me out there. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, then with that, just want to thank everyone for joining us for this episode of Podcast Stars and our discussion of the High Republic. We hope you've enjoyed the episode. And if you did, make sure you hit the subscribe button or the follow button, whatever you got on your podcast of choice, and you'll get all of our future discussions on the High Republic. And we have several to go. Uh, I'd like to remind you, you can find our entire catalog of shows over on RetroZap.com, which is home to uh, the entire network of shows covering everything from the MCU to, to DC, Doom, Star Trek, and a whole lot more. As always, we greatly appreciate your five-star ratings and reviews, whatever pie catcher that you use, if they support such things, especially if that's Apple Podcasts. And we love it when you share the show and your favorite episodes on social media with your friends. So, Jay, you want to remind everybody what those contacts are one more time. Absolutely. So our social media outlets are Instagram, Facebook, and X at Podcast Artist. And as Dennis was mentioning, you can pretty much find us everywhere. I have a lot of people that say, hey, where can I find your show? And we are literally on every podcatcher that you can possibly think of. So Spotify, YouTube, YouTube Music, head over to all of those, like and subscribe. 
Um, we also have a Pinterest page with a bunch of boards. And then our Discord channel is a great place that you can hop onto and have some real-time chatter with us. So if you'd like to do that and you'd like to talk more High Republic, just hit that link in our show notes and it'll take you right to where you need to go. And there's tons of other rooms in the RetroZep Discord server as well. So as Dennis was mentioning, there's everything from the MCU, DC, Dune, Star Trek, all kinds of geekery fun going on. So chances are you'll have something fun to talk about. And then we also have a tea public store. So if you'd like to support the show by snagging one of seven different show logo designs on everything from t-shirts and mugs to home goods and more, you can hit that, that link. And um, we are also still partnering with Saber Masters. So you'll have to check out sabermasters.com for all of the lightsaber goodness that they have over there. And if you do happen to pick anything up, make sure you put the code Stardust in at checkout and that will earn you an extra $10 off. And it also helps to support the show. So check out the link in our show notes for that. So Dennis, I know it's kind of hard to pinpoint since we're so far out into the future, but uh, what you got going on with uh, other adventures? I guess we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I'm not sure if we finished season five of Star Trek Discovery or not. If we have not, then you can head over to the Retro Zap podcast feed and you'll find my wife, Beth, and I talking about that. Again, it's exclusive to the podcast feed. Um, and yeah, we've got past uh, episodes talking about Strange New Worlds, Picard, and Lower Decks as well. And the best place to find those is at RetroZap.com. Jay, uh, it's early summer. What's going on in the world of cosplay? Well, probably right now I'm taking a break because I know the spring and early summer has just been, you know, as you've put it before, Dennis cosplay Geddon. Mm -hmm. And so there's been so much going on, but you can always catch my adventures at J.Snips Cosplay on Instagram, where you can find me as Ahsoka, two different versions of a, of Hera, the fourth sister, my new Tahiri Vela Mandalorian that I debuted at Fan Expo Cleveland in April, um, as well as some versions of Leia, X-Wing pilots and the like. So it's just the cosplay train just keeps on rolling and again you can find that at j.snips cosplay all right this is the part of the show where i usually tell you what's coming up next the answer to that is i don't know because we're recording this in april so uh <laughs> just be on the lookout uh, for our next episode coming up in a few days so thanks for listening to what i think is episode 740 <laughs> podcast artist everyone uh, until next time stay the force